Now speaking, Rick Brooks, Chief Executive Officer. The first quarter of 2021 was challenging for Zoomies, due to similar domestic trends as experienced in the fourth quarter of 2020. Consumer discretionary spending and heightened promotional activity across the industry has caused pressure on their full-price selling model. The company is staying the course with their plan outlined in March, which includes being diligent with spending and focusing on strategic investments that will create long-term benefit. These include investing in their people through best-in-class training and mentoring, optimizing trade air performance, increasing speed and flexibility with brands to increase margins, generating human-human connections with customers, and expanding into Europe and Australia. International sales increased 12.8% in Europe and 8.7% in Australia in the first quarter. The company is confident they have the right team and experience to weather these turbulent times and emerge well-positioned to accelerate market share gains when conditions improve. Now speaking, Chris Work, Chief Financial Officer. In Q1 of 2023, net sales were $182.9 million, a 17.1% decrease from 2022 due to weaker demand from North America and unfavorable foreign currency changes. Gross profit was $49.4 million, a decrease of 580 basis points compared to the prior year. SG&A expenses increased 610 basis points as a percent of net sales due to the leverage of store wages and non-wage store operating costs. Operating loss for Q1 was $21.4 million or 11.7% of net sales versus $0.5 million in 2022. Net loss for Q1 was $18.4 million or 96 cents per share. The balance sheet ended the quarter with $155.3 million in cash and current marketable securities and no debt on the balance sheet. Inventory was up 4.2% from last year. In terms of May sales, net sales decreased 12.8% while comparable sales decreased 14.3%. North American net sales decreased 17% while other international net sales decreased 12.7%. All categories were down with footwear being the most negative. Total dollars per transaction were up due to an increase in average unit retail. For Q2, total sales are expected to be between $187 million and $192 million. Product margins are expected to be down between 50 to 70 basis points from 2022. Operating loss is expected to be between negative 7.7% to 9.2% of net sales and loss per share is expected to be between negative 63 cents and negative 73 cents. 23 new stores are planned, pending location and economics. Capital expenditures are projected to be $20, $22 million and depreciation and amortization excluding non-cash lease expense is expected to be $23 million. B. Riley Financial Analyst Richard Magnuson inquired, can you discuss how you planned inventory for back to school and how you are evolving your approach to promotional merchandise packages? Chris Work replied, I'll try to distill this down. Our buying teams have done a great job managing inventory in this challenging environment. We feel confident in our inventory levels, particularly for our trending items and new brands. We are focusing on flexibility within our buying process so we can stay agile with current trends and remain open to buy. For back to school, we're doing our best to maximize performance with quick turn products. Rick Brooks replied, in response to the question about promotional environment, I anticipate some promotional activity during the back to school period. There is an overstock of certain products, such as footwear, which we will work through without sacrificing our brand's equity. We are experimenting with different ways to provide value for our customers and encourage sales in the stores. Seaport Research Partners Analyst Mitch Cummins, Inquired, question, are you seeing any disproportionate impact from consumer stress on categories such as footwear and hard goods? Rick Brooks replied, the consumer isn't under stress when it comes to the footwear category. It's more of a trend-driven issue. We've bought deeply into some trends in order to provide the best brands and coolest products. The broader discretionary pressure is more related to macroeconomic issues, and our job is to stay on top of those trends. Chris Work replied, we have seen a continued uptick in private label sales, with a 600 basis point increase in total sales compared to the previous year. Consumers have become more price conscious and are opting for private label products over brand name items. This trend is showing no signs of slowing down as private label continues to grow in popularity. Seaport Research Partners Analyst Mitch Cummins inquired, Rick, could you tell us how your company is capitalizing on the current hot trends? Are there any particular products like the Adidas Samba and Pit Viper sunglasses that have seen an increased demand? Rick Brooks replied, Mitch, there are areas of our business driving momentum, particularly with our private label lines where we're able to maintain full price and margins. Bundles have been a great value for our customers. We continue to monitor inventory and buy more deeply in the areas that are showing positive trends. Skate is still a drag on the comp structure, but we're buying more deeply in those areas to ensure we'll be prepared for back to school. Seaport Research Partners Analyst Mitch Cummins, 
inquired, can you provide an update on Blue Tomatoes profitability and explain the factors driving your strong performance in international markets? Rick Brooks replied, I believe we are gaining market share in our international markets, particularly in Europe and Australia, and our teams are executing well. We are seeing successes as we open new countries and states, with gains both in store and online. We would be faring better without macro distress and war in Ukraine, however, we remain confident in our abilities to win share. Chris Work replied, In Q1 we saw an 8.8% increase in sales from last year, which is great, but unfortunately our budgeted amount was not met and we were not profitable. However, we have seen some acceleration of the business in Q1, with positive comparable sales in all categories. We are now operating in eight countries in Europe and we believe that if we stay on this trajectory, we will be ahead of where we were in 2022 and have a good chance of reaching break-even and profitability. In Australia, the team has done a phenomenal job of executing and we are already seeing profits there. We have a strong position in the market and we are excited about the growth potential. Jeffrey's analyst Mantero Moreno Cheek inquired, can you discuss hard goods penetration and the store opening cadence for the rest of the year? Chris Work replied, in response to the question about hard goods, I can confirm that we have seen a decline from 19% of sales in 2019 in 2020 to 13% of sales in 2021. We expect this trend to continue through 2023 with our sales being at historical lows as a percentage of total sales. This is a challenging situation to predict as we have not experienced such high peaks in the past. Chris Work replied, we anticipate opening a few more stores in the back half of the year, with a 60-40 to 40 split before and after back to school. Rick Brooks replied, thank you for your interest in Zoomies. We look forward to providing a comprehensive update on our Q2 performance and early back-to-school read during our next earnings call in early September.